Welcome to Sanctuary Sunday. Sanctuary! Where I continue my series of catch-all games, or games that don't uh, fit with the primary theme of this channel, which is war games, or, you know, related war games, or even my sci-fi fantasy Saturday offerings. This is a this is a place of sanctuary, a place of refuge. And today, I'm going back, back in time, back to 1830. Well, not that far. Uh, this game, I believe, was published in uh, 1986 uh, or thereabouts by Avalon Hill. And this is 1830, the games of railroad, the game of railroads and robber barons. Uh, this is part of the 18XX line of games and uh, is actually kind of the second in this line. The first one was 1829 that was published in 1974 uh, and uh, kind of started off the whole 18XX uh, series or line of games. And I think uh, I'm not an 18XX ex expert, but uh, I've you know, read some things that, you know, that kind of talk about two lines of 18XX. One is the 1820, uh, 1829 that, uh, you know, was again published in 1974. And then the second line of games is this 1830. Now, I'm not sure exactly what de uh, delineates the difference between the two lines, but generally 18XX games are tile laying games. You, you're, you're dealing with railroads. You're laying tiles or tracks on a board, um, and there's a stock market or economic component to this where you're investing in uh, train companies or rail companies. And so not only is the laying of, of track and, you know, possibly moving goods on the track and then, you know, buying stock in the different lines, uh, all that uh adds up to kind of an economic simulation uh, and the time periods are kind of based on the the dates right so this is 1830 so this is going to be set in that time period uh, uh, and might have you know some unique characteristics of that time period and there's also you know usually different maps or different locales so you might have you know it might be in the United States you might go to Europe or, or England or or where have you uh, so there, this is a, a very, very uh, popular and well-supported segment of uh, general hobby gaming is the 18XX series. Uh, it has kind of branched out into other train games or rail games that might not uh, be as close to, you know, the, the 18XX or to either one of these two series, either the 1829 or the 1830. Uh, and uh, I've got several of those as well because uh, I like variety. But uh, I've had this on my shelf for a while. I picked this up, I don't know, I think I picked this up maybe within the last 10 years. How about that? <laughs> uh, picked this up and um, had it on my shelf and I thought I'd do a re-unboxing because, you know, I've looked in it but I haven't really separated out all the components and punched out stuff and got it to the table. Uh, I've played other uh, rail games or other versions before. I wanted to break this pristine copy open. Yeah, I bought it and it didn't have the shrink on it. So, which is not, you know, uncommon when you're buying older games, especially Avalon Hill games. So um, let's look in the box and I, I'll, I'll warn you for the faint of heart, you know, there's some rubber bands in here. This is the way I bought it. I, uh, <laughs> I don't know if it came with the, the paper money. Yes, it has paper money. Paper money in uh, rubber bands, but yes, it it, uh, it it has rubber bands on it. So let's look inside the box here. And it's a typical 1980s Avalon Hill box, kind of thin, but you know it's the a bookcase game. And kind I kind of have it set up as a bookcase game. Um, I think I did an inventory of this. So I think I've got everything in there. So 1830, a game. Of railroads and robber barons and you're looking at a 16 page rule book here but this has some tables on the back private companies railroad corporation assets trains and tile replacements then you've got some uh, 
uh, some more tables here on the inside and then some credits, which are kind of, you know, the game credits and questions and replacement parts. I don't think I could order replacement parts from Avalon Hill anymore. Here's a page 14 is a glossary terms. And then you've got some tile and hexagon examples and some train route examples on here. And it's optional induction, uh, introductory rules. And so you've got 11 pages of rules here, really. So the end of game is, is 20, uh, uh, section 25. So really you only have 11 pages of rules here. Um, playing piece examples, table of contents, rules of play. And as you can see here, there's a lot of, you know, stock round, first stock round, private companies. This is really an economic simulation uh, uh, where you're, but it's dealing with the railroad industry and, and laying of track and, and the like. Limit of stock holdings, railroad stock, change of president, selection of new president, railroad operations. And this is where you get into the, the kind of the gameplay, railroad operation sequence, uh, track construction, tokens, trains, routes, and revenue, purchasing trains, stages of the game, just kind of different trains for the different stages, private companies, sales, closure, and valuation. So if you're, if you're not into uh, a heavy, you know, uh, or, or somewhat heavy, the XX games can be relatively heavy. Uh, economic or stock game, you know, stock purchase game, then uh, this might not be your cup of tea. So there you have it. That and it's, you know, dual column, you know, this is typical kind of Avalon Hill style of rules there. But that's the rules. We've got the Avalon Hill do a friend a favor card in there. We've got the games and parts price list. Uh, February 15th, 1986, and uh, I've done a whole Coffee with Kilroy where I kind of started off going over these. I, hope, I wonder if I've done that one. If I haven't done that one, then I've got something for the next Coffee with Kilroy. I've got some tokens here that, uh, you know, decent counter stock. I mean, this is circa 1986, right there on the on the bottom there. But there's your tokens. Uh, you get these cards. Now this is the this is typical Avalon Hill. You don't uh, they didn't do like printed cards or anything. You had these little perforated things that you had to un uh, <laughs> had to kind of punch out so to speak. But here's like your different stocks. Like you see share. This is Canadian Pacific Railway, Erie, um, Canadian Pacific, Erie Railroad, Baltimore Ohio Railroad, New York. New Haven and Hartford. Here's your shares and the percentage. So again, this this is all your different shares in these different railroads in here. And you need to punch these out and perforate these out. That's why this is kind of a re-unboxing because it's not a it's not a, just a um, closer to a, a real unboxing because this has not been uh, been used. Here's some of your trains here. And, you know, games of today have much, um, much more attention to quality and detail. I mean, the, the, you'll have, like, counter stock, usually for some of the trains or the stock certificates or, or, or at least thicker paper, and then you don't have to perf it out here. So there's some of that. Then here's that paper money. That's rubber band. I know people hate seeing rubber bands, and I do too. I usually go and bag everything. But, I mean, it is paper money. But it's Avalon Hill paper money. I mean, that might be worth something, right? Uh, so that's rubber band in there. That's the way I got it. Let's dump this out a little bit here. Let's go and put the board out. So these are, you know, kind of your... Um, these are the the holding boxes i think for and these are perfed too so you see a little perf there so you're supposed to separate these but these are the holding boxes for the different railroads you've got your tokens and trains and treasury for the different railroads there 
because it's really your uh, a lot of these games are not that you necessarily own one of these railroads. You're just investing in these railroads, and multiple people can invest in them. So there's the and that again that's perfed as well. Here are your uh, rail tokens or your rail tiles. <laughs> it's kind of hard to say this is a tile. Look how thin that is. This is just kind of thicker paper, but you need to perf these out as well. You'll need to poke these. I see those little hexagons there. You'll need to poke these out uh, for the uh, before you play the game. You see them all there. And these are like your different connections, and then these uh, these might be like uh, switching routes or, or something on there. So there's your tile tracks. You got A, B, and C there. Then you get your game board, and Avalon Hill was known for its mounted map boards. You see this mounted there, and they actually have the uh, flip over or covered edge of the map board as well. Let's see if we can get some room here. Let's see what this map board looks like. But uh, I mean, for a game that was from 1986, this looks like it's in relatively good shape. Let's try to get a little bit of a we got a little bit of a glare there. Let's go up periscope a little bit. See how much we can see of the game board here. I'll move this over a little bit to get it out of the glare. But if you see here, you've got um, a map. And this looks like it's the um, Northeast United States. You have some cities here, and then you're going to be playing these tiles, you know, uh, these train routes, out, uh, or, or routes, routes, whatever you want to call it. Out of these cities and connecting and, and uh, connecting up other cities and making uh, routes, uh, and that will increase the value of the train companies and the and then you're investing in the train companies and you see some holding boxes up there for initial offerings. You have the bank pool. There's a stock market up there. We'll keep track of the, kind of the value of these uh, companies and then of course you're investing in them. You're uh, trying to do the old adage of uh, Buy low, sell high. Uh, then you've got some boxes over here for different types of trains. You have uh, two trains, three trains, four trains, five trains, six trains, and six diesel engine trains. So there you have it. Uh, mounted board here. And uh, again, th these are really uh, stock, uh, economic stock uh, purchase uh, or investment type games uh, and uh, as you can see here I mean you know compared to today's games you know whether you're talking about hobby games or even war games for that matter components are a little you know a little fragile a little skimpy there those are really for something that's the main part of the game as far as putting tiles down these are really thin and you have to poke those out but I've kept them in their original condition even the the holding boxes for the different companies you have to, you know, separate those because they're they're perfed as well here. And then even the stock shares or stock certificates are, have to be separated because they're they're perfed and uh, the trains are all perfed. <laughs> so, but the counters are, are counters, you know. And it's kind of a like a little muted color, but uh, you know, fully functional. And I imagine some of these markers are going to go on the stock market as well and keep track of that. So this is what you get in a box of 1830, a game of railroad, the, the game of railroads and robber barons from Avalon Hill, published in 1986. Um, the second in line, I mean, there were some expansions or supplements, I think, to 1829, but this is, I think, believe this is the second uh, full standalone game in the 18XX series, and uh, I think was one of the more popular ones. And I think the, the again, I need to do some more research on what was the split in the lines, or if there is really a difference. I just read that somewhere, and if you, if anybody who's watching this knows, feel free to drop that in the comments. Tell, tell, educate us. Tell us what the difference is between the 1829 line and the 1830 line, if there is one. 
um, feel free to tell us that. But I think uh, a lot of the 18xx games after this, um, th this became, I think, one of the more popular branches of that, uh, to my understanding. Uh, I might go into some other type of 18xx games or games or just train games in general. I, it's a portion of the uh, of the general hobby that I've I've picked up on over the years. I wasn't a big train person or an 18x person, but I do um, enjoy the different games and I do enjoy economic games. And I always found these to present a little bit of a different um, different gameplay and a different perspective than some of your standard games. I mean, this is definitely not your, you know, not your Monopoly, right? Not your, uh, not your grandfather's or your father's Monopoly. So, um, interest, uh, anyway, that's what I have for you today. Uh, I might have some more on Sanctuary Sunday, but I uh, really do appreciate you stopping by and looking at this stuff, uh, or looking at it with me. This was kind of an interesting open. I haven't looked in this since, since I bought it. And again, that that's sometime within the last decade. I've had this on my shelf for quite some time. And maybe I need to get to the table. Or have, will I break the value if I start punching out the or start perfing those uh, those fragile pieces there? Yeah, I'll, I'll take your advice. Let me know in the comments. Anyway, have a good one. Take care. <laughs>